Hello and welcome. It's the time of the year where students are preparing for NEET and everyone is tense. What will be the possible date when the NEET will actually take place? The same goes for the board examinations and also the JE exams. But in this video, we'll speak to Kapil Gupta, founder of NEETprep.com, specifically about the preparation for NEET, what you should do over the next four months. Kapil, hello and welcome. Thank you very much for giving us that time. I hope you're doing well. So then I'm doing very well and uh, thank you very much for your wishes. Uh, let's get the big question out of the way. Will the NEET take place on the 2nd of May, which was which has been the usual date for NEET over the past many years, not in the last couple of years, definitely. But 2022, will it again see a delay in the conduct of the NEET exam? So Sudhir, if we, uh, uh, I see a couple of things uh, which makes me wonder if it is really feasible on 2nd May or not. First of all, the counseling process has just started. It is not going to finish for the existing students till 30th March. What that means is if any student wants to decide, I'm not getting a college of my preference or you know what, I want to write exam again. Those students, if exam is conducted on second may get only one month because the final result of the counseling is going to be out by 30th March. The second thing is my sense is that uh, this being election season, this, uh, this being a significant electorate in all the colleges, at least the households, our stakeholders of uh, the exam their kid is going to write. So uh, at this point of time, uh, giving out uh, exam date, I don't think uh, is politically prudent. My sense is dates are not going to come before the last round of last day of voting, which is 7th March in UP, right? And from that point onwards, pure logistics of it, uh, giving one month of time for people to respond. This is a vast country. Some people will get to know about notification on the 20th day. So they typically give a month then they give seven day window for any correction you want to have. Then a month later, they'll check all the details through whatever software they have. They'll uh, uh, push out the admit card and uh, from admit card, uh, at least 15 to 20 days. So 37, uh, 167 plus 15. So which means uh, we are talking about at least three months from 7th March, right? April, May, June. So it should not happen before uh, 10th to 15 June minimum. My sense more is uh, towards uh, end of June. Okay, so end of June is what you're looking at, which means that students have the entire Feb, March, April. Five months. Yeah, four to five months in order to prepare. Now, uh, given the fact that the CBSC schedule for board examinations, the semester two board exams is also not out. And I guess the education ministry will need to coordinate between the dates of the board exams, the NEET, the JE exams, etc., so that there is no uh, clash leading to more angst among students. So, uh, do you think that the board exams will they will wait for all the entire board exam process to get over and they, they're, thereafter only announce the date for the deed? Which is why you are saying that this June time is what looks more possible. Ideally, yes. Uh, but uh, again, the thing is, when are they going to announce these uh, board exam dates also? Uh, I gave you a scenario where they uh, give, give the notification in a month's time. If they're going to give a notification in a month's time for need, I'm assuming they should come out with a notification for CBSC in a, uh, in a couple of weeks. What is your sense? You are much better informed with uh, the iron curtain which exists for normal people. Well, the iron curtain is rather strong these days. In fact, uh, most of the bureaucrats also, my senses, do not kind of reveal much because the decision making is not really at the uh, level of the bureaucrats anymore. Uh, many of the decisions we have seen in the last couple of years have taken place at the political level, whether it was with respect to cancel the exams altogether or to postpone or take any major decision. Uh, so uh, nothing really known because even the semester one results were not announced. Everyone was expecting it to come at least in the first half of Jan. That did not happen. Uh, the dates they will have to announce sometime around the 20th of February max because then yeah. they will need to give a month because one is assuming that the Board exams will take place sometime in the month of April, by which time the elections, everything, the entire process also would have uh, got over. Uh, the other question that I wanted to ask Kapil is that now 12th class students who are appearing for NEET, now they have kind of dealt with a much reduced syllabus for class 12. How does something like that impact a student who is preparing for NEET at the same time? Because that would mean the entire thing has to be covered. How do they kind of grapple with two uh, kind of scenarios, one reduced syllabus, one entire syllabus. And what should be the strategy? 
So Sudhir, ideally, uh, so last year, uh, they created this pattern in NEET exam, like in JE, where there were internal choices. There was a section A, there was a section B. Yes. And section B was supposed to cater to the fact that in a lot of schools, students were taught as per reduced syllabus, assuming that every student is not going to a coaching, can he clear an exam like NEET just by going through his school studies? So uh, it was assumed that if any uh, question is going to come from beyond reduced syllabus, it would come in section B so that students have the option of leaving it. It did not happen at all in NEET exam. Mm -hmm. Probably there was a communication gap between what the education Mr. minister, Mr. Uh, uh, Nishank was saying earlier and uh, what was given in the notification and what finally happened. So what we have been telling students right now on our platform is they should not assume that it would be a reduced syllabus. You might have had reduced syllabus in your board exam in your term one, but don't assume reduced syllabus in your NEET exam. Having said that, if you look at physics, not all complete chapters have been re removed. Complete chapters have been removed in class 12th and class 11th for these students. So those specific chapters, they will have to study, but what they can do is they can study them right towards the end rather than now. They might come out this time and say very, very strictly, whatever happens, we are going to give the complete exam from reduced syllabus only. So which will save them out of 96 chapters, approximately 13 to 14 chapters, complete 13 to 14 chapters and uh, specific portions in different chapters. So my recommendation is, would be go by your board exam and school exam uh, syllabus for 11th and 12th for NEET right. also. Yeah. Wait for the notification. Notification will clarify whether it is going to be complete syllabus or not. If it is okay. complete syllabus, read the balanced chapters from there on. Okay, that's an important uh, suggestion to give so that they can kind of save on that much of time. The other important point is how, how do they prepare for the mock test given that mentally they would have about four months. Uh, would need to be conducted more than once this time? Would it kind of shift also to an online format like JE? What are you hearing from your sources? I, uh, I believe that uh, I believe, but my belief uh, doesn't mean much. I believe it should happen online and should have happened twice. The mandate of NTA, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, you, have, uh, you have interacted with uh, senior people in NTA. What I heard, what I've heard when I've interacted with them is they they need uh, they want to become a world class testing agency. They want to offer their services beyond India. If they go out and say to people that we conduct pen paper OMR exams, it looks terrible, right? So uh, my sense is this being probably one of the biggest exams in the world, neat in yes. terms of number of people who are writing the exam. Uh, if you obviously uh, remove the exams like that. Uh, exam which caused riots in uh, Bihar right now for, for which 1.25 crore people wrote for 35,000 seats. If you look at competitive exam 16 lakh, this is one of the biggest exam. My sense is it should happen twice, which is good for the students. It should happen online so that all this discrepancies and noise every year which happens because of pen paper OMR format that goes away. So uh, that is my sense. It should It should happen twice and it should not happen in pen paper OMR format. So if that happens, would that call for a different kind of preparation strategy on part of the students, especially with uh, respect to mock tests? Pen paper OMR, uh, filling OMR typically takes 15 to 20 minutes. What that means is you truly get all the 180 minutes rather than actually only 160 minutes out of 180. So what that means is you can, uh, you can allocate more time uh, in your mock test. Uh, when you're when you're writing these mock tests rather than uh, provision only 160 minutes but Sudhir, uh, this is where i again want to know from you are you hearing from these people whether they're going to announce anything forget about notification at least purely from the logistics of how kids are preparing they should know whether it's going to happen twice or not they should know whether it is going to it's going to be a huge relief it happens if it happens twice for a lot of kids they they walk into the examination hall for the first time and they freeze it is it is uh, it is uh, overbearing so i hope they ad announce at least this thing that it is going to happen twice and it is going to be online but you're also not hearing anything like this nothing at all in fact if you recall uh, february end was when the first phase of je took place last year uh, 2021 we haven't heard anything on when je is going to be conducted this year so in that sense as you say there is an iron curtain there isn't much of information coming from the nta or from other wings of the education ministry as to what 
they are thinking or planning and i completely agree this kind of puts uh, you know keeps the students on tenter hooks they don't know whether there will be any kind of change at the last minute whether the four attempts whether there will be any change in the four attempts of je or any change in the attempts of deet of course which will be to the advantage of the students uh, my final question the 2021 you spoke about uh, the counseling at length uh, for the 2021 batch uh, assuming that all goes well with 2022 batch this would mean that there would be just a few months difference between the 2021 and the 2022 batch how do you think this would play out at the medical college level let's uh, let's look at uh, the quick timelines uh, for this year 2021 batch who got significantly delayed the counseling is going to go out, uh, going on right now that is going to finish complete allocation on 30th march which means colleges in all fairness uh, students know uh, they they do their travel arrangement they come there they have finalized their hostel they settle down and classes start probably first may so first may becomes date for 2021 assuming end of june is the earliest date for me 2022 so end of june exam happens a month later 30th july result come 15 days later counseling starts and counseling like this year is a is a two month process right so which means uh, 15th august so 15 september 15th october your counseling ends and one month later so earliest 15th november is when uh, these people can uh, start uh for 2022 so we are talking about may june july august september october six and a half months yeah. so that is that is very less yeah. and uh, which means there would be an overlap of five and a half months between the students and that overlap will continue for all the five years so uh but uh, the in, terms of of in terms of logistics for the medical colleges that will be quite a herculean task I was talking to uh, Dr. Mishra, who was ex-director of pains before uh, Dr. Guleria. Right now, he said uh, it has happened in the past. But my sense is, uh, he was talking about uh, isolated cases when AIMS or uh, new AIMS came up, six new AIMS came up. Then uh, it happened. Uh, specific colleges, it uh, it happened when they come up. But you have to apply it to uh, all the private and government medical colleges. Even a lot of government medical colleges are not completely staffed private medical colleges suffer from this uh, endemic problem that they don't have in a faculty i don't know uh, how practical it is so uh, i don't know the answer to it uh, we are not going to get a clear cut answer for uh, uh, this from the government uh, government ka attitude typically hota hai ho jayega sir we'll do it that is what, uh, what probably the bureaucrat says to the uh, to the uh, political person who asks uh, whether it can be done but when it comes to the ground uh, it it seems like a tough tough situation for both 21 and 22 students uh, number of labs uh, number of ca uh, cadavers on on which you can dissect, uh, dissect the size of the lecture theaters the tutorials etc that happens after that so the, the whole capacity is going to get significantly stretched stretched yeah but as far as the 2022 batch is concerned the students who are preparing for neat 2022 four months which is the business end of your entire academic year preparation time so you need to make the most of it i mean that could i guess be the larger message that needs to go out right yeah right so uh, four months is what counts and you need to make the most of it thank you very much kapil for joining us here